Welcome back. Guess what? I'm pregnant again. I was right. All the symptoms. I am pregnant again. I am so thrilled to announce that my husband and I are expecting our technically second baby after a miscarriage and we are so excited to be parents. We're just so happy to be in this place of life and thank God every day for this opportunity. We are so fortunate to be able to get pregnant fast and I've been praying and so far my numbers look fantastic for this pregnancy. I've gotten my blood drawn three times and the numbers keep doubling if not tripling and they just are really high a lot sooner than last pregnancy and I'm feeling like garbage. <laughs> I'm almost seven weeks today as I'm filming this and it's been a little rough. I've had some severe nausea. I guess not early morning sickness because I'm not vomiting but I guess but I've had some severe nausea the last week and a half if not two weeks now and that was not the case last pregnancy. Um, my doctor did early early on put me on progesterone supplements which have obviously seem to have helped. <laughs> my progesterone levels were low just like last time. They're actually they were actually even lower in the beginning first blood draw than they were last pregnancy. So that really alerted the doctor to you know to put me on the supplements. So I've been taking that every night by mouth and and it's been helping a lot but I feel like garbage. Like this is probably what normal people feel like in pregnancy because my progesterone normally is not high on its own. So once I turn seven weeks, the placenta of the baby starts to take over and I won't have to take the progesterone supplements anymore. So I've got a few more days, I've got to push through because I can't function right now. And <laughs> it's taken a lot out of me to put this video together, even though I'm so excited. I should have filmed this earlier. <laughs> but here we are, I'm pregnant again and I'm I'm so happy and feel joy and even with the, preg the nausea, I know it's a good sign the baby's healthy and growing and I'm so grateful even feeling so bad. It's all for a good cause. <laughs> but once again, I feel like this baby's a boy and I know I just say that every time but I really do feel like this baby is a boy and his soul is trying to reach us and come onto the earth side in three weeks, not now. It is October 22nd, 2021, and officially our due date will be June 12th, 2022. That's exciting. Most time, most of the members of my family for the first baby give birth either right on schedule or a little early. So I wouldn't mind the baby coming a tiny bit early just so I won't have to be so pregnant. My guess estimation is June 2nd, 2022, but that's just my guess. My husband thinks June 11th, so we'll see who's right. But I'm currently planning the gender reveal party. I've got my decoration set up next to me, which is this next Saturday, uh, October 30th, with my family. I'll be telling different family members all throughout this next week after our first ultrasound appointment this Monday. I have all sorts of worries, but I'm trying to give that to God and not worry because there's nothing I can do and I have to trust that everything's okay. My husband's convinced everything's fine. I wish I had his faith. He's just scotch happy. <laughs> so yeah, everything should be fine. I, I feel like everything's fine this time. But I'll be a nervous wreck going to that first ultrasound on Monday the 25th. And only like a very, 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 very small handful of people know that basically had to know for different reasons because I just can't function. So. I'm just waiting to tell family and friends this time until after that first ultrasound and I know it's just doesn't, there's never a safe zone in life but for my mental health sake that's what I decided is best for me and best for us is to wait till after that to start sharing with the family and if something happens after that I'll have their support and it will help me through with that. Um, <sighs> Sorry, I felt so sick. I just can't eat anything. <laughs> I'm gonna collect myself. Um, what else do I need to cover? I'm gonna make this quick. <laughs> uh, my intuition was right the last video with the two week wait. My stomach looks like I'm three months pregnant when I'm only barely two. That's gonna be fun. I wonder how big I'm gonna get, but I've actually lost some weight, which I mean, it's not ideal, but I there's nothing I can do about it. I'm trying my best to eat, but I just feel so ill. And nothing, nothing helps, nothing at all. 
I'm just hoping that that eventually gets better, especially after getting off the progesterone supplements. I know that's a large contributing factor to how I'm feeling. All I know is right now it's helping the baby, so that's what I'll be doing. One of the things I've noticed this pregnancy is Lucy has been super clingy to me lately. And that's what they say the sign is at first, you know, when you get pregnant, is your dog is super attached to you. And last time I was pregnant, the baby is already not healthy by the time we took Lucy home. So there was no way to even know if she's actually clean because we didn't even know her yet either. And there's just no way to tell. And she's a puppy. So now it's a good indication. And it's true, like almost immediately she's been like glued to my side. <laughs> Sometimes I gotta peel her off. <laughs> but it's been tough with her because I can't take her on walks right now because I get so out of breath. And that's also a symptom I experienced last pregnancy where if I go up a flight of stairs, I have to lay down for 30 minutes to recover. And it sounds ridiculous. I'm in shape. I'm a very healthy athletic person. But I have a lot of side effects to uh, progesterone and just higher levels of my body and HCG where I just can't breathe and I can't take Lucy on her walks and she expects that and I don't want my pregnancy to negatively affect her in something that she loves and lives for and what I love and live for but just that's the last thing I want right now to do is to go out on a walk up hills and our neighborhood's hilly. Um, I noticed I'm out of breath, that's another thing. But yeah, so I've been really guilty that Lucy hasn't gotten the love and attention she's needed those past week and a half, two weeks. But I know that'll have to that'll end soon and it'll get better. And she'll understand because she's just turned 18 months. So her level of excitement's just gonna get better and better from here in the sense of calming down, which that might be nice a little bit. <laughs> just a tiny bit. Um, I'm still getting headaches. A lot of those Two week weight symptoms have kind of gone away. I have extreme food aversion, food aversions, which of course goes hand in hand with nausea. Uh, still get headaches. I'm sleeping pretty well. I'm just always tired. My energy is very low, and I feel like a bum because I can't do anything. And my husband's very kind and very supportive, and says, "Oh, and you know, always tells me like, oh, you're doing just fine. Just don't worry about it." But I feel like a bum. <laughs> I'm trying to do stuff around the house, but I just can't do it. They say nine weeks is like the peak of just feeling awful. Six weeks is one elbow, 12 weeks the other elbow. As you climb from six to nine, it gets worse and worse. You're nine to 12, it gets back to feeling better and it gets that, no that level of beginning to feel nausea on both sides, six and 12 weeks. And then after that, it's, you know, you feel better and better until you're really uncomfortable in your late third trimester or middle to late third trimester. So I'm getting closer to that peak of, of not feeling great. I'm feeling it about every day it gets worse. So I'm hoping to get over that peak really quick and just start feeling better and better and better throughout the rest of the pregnancy. But yeah, so I just, it's surreal that I'm pregnant again. I'm sitting here a year, almost a year and a half later from the last time. I pray that everything goes well this pregnancy. We just really want to be parents and I want to bring home my baby and set up the nursery and have good news in that first ultrasound and be able to share the family with the family just joy and happiness. And I want to feel that in my life too. <laughs> oh, I just, I really like that to happen. But I've already planned the gender reveal party, which is a leap of faith. Because I know we don't, we haven't had our ultrasound yet, but everything's happening so fast. I'm doing the blood test at seven, seven weeks exactly to know the baby's gender. And that's sent off, it just tells you the gender. And my friend is giving it to the bakery. I've set up with them and they're just going to fill a cake a gender reveal cake with either pink or blue m ms whichever it is, and when Cody and I cut into the cake on the gender reveal day, all the blue or pink m ms are going to spill out, and then it'll be like, oh, it's a girl, it's a boy, it's a boy. <laughs> and then we'll announce the name that we're going to pick, and you know, what's ironic is every member of my family is going to be in town. Every member of my family, Cody's family, what are the odds that never happens, and they're all in town on the 30th. And they're just going to be so surprised and be able to come to the party and my dad will be able to come who lives in New York. So I'm just really surprised that it's all worked out this way. And I just pray to God there's no way something could be wrong because some it's all playing out so perfectly in what feels like his plan and his timing. And I'm just going to be so broken if something happens. I just hope and pray that all these signs from him are his will and are going to go well. And I just, I'm just wanting some joy. I just want some joy. 
I don't care how bad I feel. I just want the joy of bringing a little Kayla and Cody home, you know, and starting our family. I'm ready for more love in our house and more activity, more action, more life. I want more life in our house. And I that's the first time I've ever felt that the other day before I even knew I was pregnant. And if you go back to my pregnancy reveal video, I can't believe I found that on my own. I know better, but my period was a day late. And I felt so pregnant, even though I kept getting negative pregnancy tests. And I was almost in denial because I saw that second line appear and I was like, man, these cheap tests, they've got to stop that. People are going to think they're pregnant. And I was like, wait a minute, I really might be pregnant. I took another one, same thing. I took a real one, like an expensive one, and it said, yes. So I was like, hmm. <laughs> and it was my nighttime urine on that day I missed my period. So, oh, I probably could have tested, you know, the day I missed my period. I just assumed my period was coming in hours away. I had no idea. But I should have, I should have took it with Cody. He was at work. I mean, he was like two hours away from being home. I should have waited. I just, I knew it was negative because of all the spotting and just everything. <laughs> oh goodness. It was quite a surprise to me. <laughs> but yeah, so I can't wait for you to follow along on our journey. I'm probably going to do weekly updates starting after eight weeks just because last time I went up to seven, eight weeks and I just feel out of respect for that loss and for my feelings and soul. It's the healthiest thing for me to continue that after um, and just not have to stress and worry about it. So you should be seeing weekly updates soon and I'll kind of bring you along for my first ultrasound appointment. Just be praying for me. Thank you guys. By the time you see us, I'll already have it and hopefully it'll be good news. See ya. Bye. Let's do a quick bump, bump shot before we go. Like, you can always, like, that is not my stomach. It is like pudgy right here. What is happening? Turn to the side. Well, I guess it's hard to see, but it's a lot chunkier than normal, like right here. Ta-da! Alright, guys.